More at mbusa.com slash eqe dash suv. Mike Tirico, he's uh, going to be hosting the Olympics in Paris coming up later on this summer. He was busy this weekend as he was uh, doing master's duty for Sirius XM, and he joins us on the program. Uh, why do you think the ratings were up for the uh, Masters this year? Uh, Tiger, for sure. You know, we haven't seen Tiger play for a bunch. Uh, so having him in that Thursday slot, I think, was good. I also think, Dan, like golf needed to be together a little bit. And getting the live guys and the tour guys back, it felt like it was the first big, big event of the year. The players was a great event, but you have something missing. And I think sooner or sooner than later, excuse me, they're going to need to get both sides back together. This sport is not big enough to split the pie. What did you think was going to happen? Let's go back to Thursday or Wednesday. In, in golf, so Brandel Chambly, who I know you've had on, uh, Brandel says some outrageous headline grabbing things that don't often get said in the very nice world of golf commentary. And he said, no, Scotty should win by seven or eight shots. And if he's got his best game, go Brandel, like easy, <laughs> man. Like, but Scotty didn't have his best and he won by four. Um, I got to do the Bay Hill Arnold Palmer tournament and the players and see Scotty win both of those and watch most of Houston where he missed a putt on 18 to get in the playoff. Uh, so he's first, first, second. And it's real. Like his, his ball striking, Dan, is so good. His scrambling is so good. And the one thing that was weak is putting. He got figured out. So I think we all expected Scotty to be the guy right near the top of the board. Uh, but uh, I, was, I was still impressed with his dominance uh, this week and his ability to win by that many, especially the way he played. Look, he played on the second nine like he's the number one guy in the world. We always want to fast track somebody to greatness and put them in categories. Right. Now yeah. you're, <laughs> hey, you're the next Jack. You're the next Tiger. You know, Scotty's 27, and there's nothing yeah. dynamic about him. You could say he's the golf equivalent to John Stockton. He just kind of shows up, does his job, doesn't care about really anything else, cares about his faith and his family. But are we ready to fast track, you know, Scotty? Yeah, yeah, two, two masters in three years. So the one thing you're going to want to see is Scotty win outside of this stretch of the year. All of his wins have come from January to April. Now we're, we're really nitpicking, right? But that would be the next step. Win a U.S. Open. Uh, he, he can contend in all of these tournaments. He can contend in Louisville at the, at the PGA being played at Valhalla the week after the Derby. So he's got all of that. I did the radio broadcast on Sirius XM and worked with Taylor Zarzer, who's a terrific guy and does a great job covering golf for them. Uh, and does college football and other stuff. I thought Taylor brought up a good one. Pete Sampras or NASCAR Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, I thought those were really good. Like, defined excellence in many ways when you look at the record, stretches of dominance, but very low-key. This is who I am. I'm not going to go seek every endorsement under the sun. Success will not change me. I'm just going to be this guy. Scotty's fun. Scotty's a nice guy to be around. Uh, great humor, a great family, obviously deep in faith. Uh, but he's not going to be seeking the wow stuff that you get, even with a Bryson DeChambeau. So those, I thought all those, Stockton for you as well, those are really apt and good comparisons. That doesn't mean he's not great. It just means he's not Madison Avenue million dollars every time he turns around. And that's fine. And it's kind of like Andrew Luck as well. Like you yeah, he, he didn't want endorsements, uh, didn't really care, walked away from the game and, you know, never really returned. We're talking to Mike Tirico joining us uh, in Augusta before he goes to Paris to uh, get ready to host the Summer Games, Summer Olympics. Yeah. Are you ready for that? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm not staying the entire time. Oh, you're yet. not. OK. <laughs> you... No, no, I'm not. Okay. I'll be, back. I'll okay. be back, on, back on Friday, actually. I'll be back in a couple of days. Oh, yeah. OK. It's a hundred. It's a hundred days out. So we kind of light the candle to get everybody ready. Uh, today's show is going to have a bunch of the Team USA athletes on the plaza with Savannah, Hoda, Al, Craig, and the whole crew. I'll be in Paris, so it just kind of gets us gets us going. I'll do a few things over there, too, in advance of going back, what, 12 weeks later for the games? I love DeChambeau in the villain role. Uh, I, I don't know if he embraces the villain role, but I, I yeah. he's good content. He wears some of that black hat. There's no doubt about it. Uh, content's the perfect word. Uh, you know, every sport has its little social media following and group of commentators. And I thought the ones on DeChambeau were 
dead on when they said he's the best content provider, whether it's the drives or carrying the sign pole like he did. Hey, this is a temporary immovable, immovable object. I'm going to move it. And he just kind of carries it and moves it around. I, Yeah, there's a little bit of villain, quote unquote. And I think anybody who went to live who's going to come back is going to be, if that happens, there's going to be a little bit of that role at varying degrees and levels. I think DeChambeau is interesting and unique. I think he's one of the most unique guys, certainly in golf and maybe in all of sport. He does things so different. Dan, he was using a pair, a set of irons that cost $10,000 to produce. One of a kind, 3D printer made the irons. They weren't conforming, didn't fit the rules of the USGA officially until Monday. They had to be tested. So he does things to push the edges. Sport needs that. Every sport does. This one especially. I, I hope he's back playing with these guys soon because I think he's talented. He's very different, and he's very good. The Tiger situation, he makes the cut again, but certainly stumbled towards the finish line, finishing, finishing last. Uh, I, I kept looking to see, was he injured? Was he limping? And I think he was honest afterwards, just said, look, I didn't play well. What did you take from Tiger's performance or lack thereof? He's going to be impacted by his injuries for the rest of his career. He's got fused back and a fused ankle, right? It's kind of limiting in the world of golf. I think it's remarkable at 48, when he doesn't need another dollar to do this, he continues to want to try to compete as much as possible. Uh, I think Friday having to play 23 holes because we didn't get yeah. done on Thursday, probably set him back. It was an early turnaround. It takes hours for him just to be ready to go play because of all he has to do is get his, get his body to that point. But it's the first time in a regular event he's completed 72 holes in over a year. So I think that's a box to check and a positive. Says he wants to play in the other majors. We'll see if he does. But the fact that he's even talking about being able to do it is good. The two things I saw yesterday that were, to me, the coolest, because Augusta, as you know, you've been here so many times. It gives you the great feels, and it's really cool stuff. One was Tiger, who is known for being laser, laser focused, stopping at 16 to walk over and say hi to Vern Lundquist when Vern was watching from down behind a tree there. It's just the ultimate sign of respect. I thought it was so cool uh, that Tiger did that. And seeing Tiger's kid out in the tournament practice area <laughs> with him, like holding a wedge, holding the, the shaft of a driver to have your hands fly under it. It's a drill that guys do often. Uh, it was just really cool to see because we both were have been here, Dan, seeing Tiger's dad with Tiger. And now we're seeing Tiger with his son. And Charlie's like talking swing stuff with him. It's just for one of the biggest athletes we'll see come across in our lifetime uh, to see this evolution and generational pass along. Uh, it was so cool. I, I'll, I'll take that with me for a long time. Do you think Tiger's afraid of retirement? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, what, what do they tell everybody? Uh, do it until they tell you you can't anymore or you can't anymore if you really love it. And he is obsessed with the sport. Uh, so afraid of it in some ways, but I think as long as he can get himself out there and do it, look, Jack did. Yeah, but what Phil do you do when do you it. retire from golf? Do you play golf? You, you play <laughs> golf. You, you talk about golf. You design golf courses, right? Yeah. You put out a line of golf clothes and shoes. And other, Jack's still out here talking golf and being a part of it. He visited with us this week. Tom Watson is Gary players running around telling people you need to do more sit-ups. You need to get in better shape. <laughs> and he's in his late eighties and he's like hitting tee shots and throwing that leg up in the air with that kick. So yeah, it's a forever sport. And I think the association with it uh, fuels and drives a lot of these guys. Other guys have other hobbies. I don't think tiger has as many other hobbies as these guys do like fishing or other stuff like that. All right. Uh, can we get a little bit of your master's voice before we say goodbye? So, so this is interesting doing the radio as I have for Sirius XM for the last, I guess, four the last five years, uh, you have a commentary position that is right by the 18th green. I mean, from you to the Danettes to the 18th green that far away. So when you go out there and I only go out there for the last four holes, you do have to speak softly. So as Scheffler is about 20 yards from me, getting over the putt, you have to do the Scotty Scheffler shuffles his feet, pulls the putter back and in, and then you've got to go match the crowd <laughs> and you feel like a complete idiot. But that's, 
that's why for years golf announcers whispered because the towers were right over the greens and guys would look up and go, hey, I'm trying to work down here. What are you doing, right? So uh, we don't have many towers that we do that anymore. They're all in closed booths, but that's the one situation you've got to go, this is for Birdie and the Masters. So there you go. Have you been shushed before? I have not. I have not. And I haven't done this very much in terms of being that close, but I am uh, – I am shushless. I, I leave Augusta <laughs> for the third consecutive Masters of four of the last five. Sands shush. What an incredible streak you're on, Mike. Congratulations. <laughs> hey, uh, you're brutal. Safe travels to Paris. Good to talk to you. Thanks, Thanks, pal. Thanks for making time. Oh, all the time. Talk to you over the summer, bud. Be safe. Mike Tirico.